what is good what is up it's jordan or texans thoughts and i'm back with another texans film breakdown today we're gonna be breaking down the electric will fuller there's zero questioning his talents on the field whenever he plays he and deshaun watson put up video game like numbers they're an unstoppable duo and the offense looks like one of the best in the entire nfl his elite ability to take the top off defenses opens up so much more for the offense and really plays to Deshaun's strength as a deep ball thrower. He's bulked up this season, cut off his dreads, and we need all the good juju to get him to play a full season because if that happens, he's breaking records, man. So if you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. Now, let's break down the film of Will Fuller the fifth because the film don't lie. So of course, we've got to start with Fuller's most elite skill, his ability to win deep. Now, there's a lot that goes into a receiver's ability to win deep and we'll touch on all those aspects throughout the video, but of course, it all starts with his 4-3-2 40-yard dash speed and it really just looks like he's gliding through air. He looks effortless as he blazes by whoever's in front of him. I mean, look at this. It looks like he's walking on damn water. You can't play cover zero against him because that's just giving your cornerbacks a death sentence. Hell, you can't even play single high because he'll destroy safety's angles as well. Fuller is a straight up burner and as a defense, you have to be aware of where he is on the field at all times. But the NFL is full of athletes and the great thing about Fuller is that he doesn't just rely on his track star speed to win. He's a very underrated and technically nuanced route runner and I'll dive deep into his routes soon but I want to talk about his releases on deep routes and how he uses change of pace to get open. Look how he starts off a bit slower almost lulling the cornerback to sleep then he accelerates into his next gear and the cornerback stands no chance. You have to work to get open and Fuller understands that because obviously defenses know his scouting report so you have to throw them off their game and make sure that you're not predictable. I love how he chops his footwork during some of these releases, changing up the pace and varying it like he's playing basketball, like that's what you gotta do to throw these defenders off. I especially love how quickly he runs these routes. He's not Braxton Miller running a damn 17 second long slant, every movement he makes has a purpose. Every little step, every little head fake, it's all to set up the go route. Here he fakes inside, then quickly explodes outside and downfield. And because he's so damn fast, as a cornerback, if you mess up on one step, that's all it takes for you to be burnt like toast. On these go routes, you want to win to the outside, and so Fuller is so good at threatening the inside, forcing the cornerback to commit, and then accelerating in the opposite direction. I love this release here, and you can see that Fuller, he has his inside foot forward, right? And his first step with that foot is gonna actually go backwards and to the inside. And so he also sells the inside route with a good body fake. As you can see, he leans to the right, and the cornerback follows him. That inside foot of the quarterback goes with Fuller to the inside, and even though he keeps his hips square, he's on the heels of his feet, not his toes, and thus he can't react quick enough when Fuller takes it outside. He tries to grab on to Fuller, get physical with him, but he responds nicely by dipping his shoulder and just bursts right by the cornerback. And then that catch? Oof, I see you. This breakdown is supposed to be just on Fuller's 2019 season, but I wouldn't be doing his deep threat ability justice if I didn't show off these next two plays. I'm telling you, his connection with Deshaun Watson is something else, and it's only gonna get better. The offense with him healthy performs like a top five unit. Without him, that's another story, but his explosive play ability makes everyone's job easier, and I can't wait to see how we perform with Brandon Cooks burning cornerbacks left and right as well. We've got tons of firepower and one of the best young guns at quarterback in Deshaun Watson. I hate to interrupt the video, but I've got to let y'all know about something groundbreaking for this channel. Starting now, you are welcome to join the Texans Thoughts team and get some exclusive access to some big time perks. Hit this join button and for just $3.99, you'll get an extra video a month where you guys vote on what I make. Also, you'll be added to a private group chat with me and other members of the team where we can talk all things Texans. Previews of games, live chats during the game, my thoughts on certain players, trades or signings, anything you want. 
You'll also get priority in recommending what videos I make, some behind the scenes footage of player interviews, and this is really just the best way to help me reinvest into the channel and improve the quality for you guys. So for less than your monthly Netflix subscription, hit that join button to be part of the Texans Thoughts team. Now, there's more to Fuller than just his deep threat ability, but one thing that stems from the fear of his speed is that it opens up things underneath. Defenses are so scared to be beaten over top, as they should, that they need to play with such a huge cushion that it puts them out of position to break on shorter routes. This is just easy money every time for Fuller and Deshaun. Against off-man coverage here, look at the difference in pace of how these two outside cornerbacks backpedal. Let's look at the one against Nuke first, and he's going to take kind of horizontal steps because he's not scared of Nuke beating him over top. He doesn't have to fear his deep speed, whereas if you look at Casey Hayward here on the other side, his backpedal is going to go back vertically and a half a step faster than the other cornerback because he's got fuller, right? So you can see it there, he's going back faster, and then that half a step, it hurts him because he makes a pretty fluid break on the ball and drive forward, but he's just a bit too late because he did have to respect that deep threat. And we see this all the time. Nuke will get pressed, whereas Fuller warrants a cushion, and especially if you're going to play single high and not help out your cornerback with a safety, you got to help him out with that cushion. But then we know exactly how to take advantage of that. Deshaun has shown that he can just take what the defense gives him and not force the ball downfield if that's what you're trying to take away. Now, as a counter, defenses could just try and press Fuller, but this play shows how the offense can adjust to the defense's counter and still get Fuller that cushion if all we need, you know, is some short yardage or even get him into space for some yak. I think a common misconception around the NFL is that Fuller is just a deep threat. Well, he's not. He's a very smart, detailed, and nuanced route runner who just knows how to get open. And I love how he sells a deep route here. He fires off to the outside at first and looks downfield like he's trying to win deep, but then snaps it off sharply for an easy gain. You can really see how he uses his deep threat ability to set up his routes. Again, he fakes the go to the outside and fires inside on the curl instead. He wants to win inside, right? So he's going to have to sell the cornerback in the opposite direction. And then boom, there's one outside fake and then another one where he gives a subtle head fake to the outside and the cornerback really has to respect that and he can't break inside like he needs to to actually make a play on the ball. Fuller also has a very good understanding of zone principles and the depth of certain types of drops. Here he runs a corner route right into the hole of this Falcons cover 3, and you can see that typically there will be a defender in this area, but Fuller knows that this zone won't carry very deep. So he ensures he gets past that defender, then also sells like he's going deep, so that this cornerback isn't able to sit on an intermediate route like he's running and break on the ball, and that's just a beautiful throw by Watson and perfect route by Fuller. One thing that Fuller has made huge strides in is beating press because, you know, he's not the most physical dude, not like new Copkins and early in his career, sometimes cornerbacks can jam him and throw off his timing, but he's gotten so much better at using his hands to win the line of scrimmage. Look at this one where he does a really great job pairing his feet to his hands. He's going to fake outside with that plant foot and burst inside, but what's really impressive is how he uses a club swim, like a damn pass rush here to beat the cornerback. He clubs with his left arm and swims over with his right to get open and that's just surgical damn this time against tyron matthew who's known for being physical and when matthew jams him fuller responds by grabbing onto matthew's wrist and just pushing him off it can be that simple and he wins so quickly that there's no time to recover now this one was a great back and forth between him and malcolm butler butler actually grabs both of fuller's biceps instead of the usual jam into the receiver's chest so fuller responds by dropping his arms down to his side so that it's harder for butler to grab them and you can see how Butler's now leaning forward and doesn't have good balance, so he counters by getting hold of Fuller's shoulder pad so that he can stay attached. Now at this point, it looks like Butler's kind of winning the rep, right? But Fuller needs to hit him with one more move, and we know that he wants to win inside, so he leads Butler outside and he's even looking in that direction to sell the fake. Then he slightly pushes off and cuts inside and creates a beautiful throwing window for Deshaun. That was really just a damn good example of hand fighting and subtle physicality throughout a route where each player, they were just throwing counter punches to each other, man. That's some fun ass football to watch. Fuller pairs his speed and route running together to be a complete game changer for the offense. And another area that he brings value is with his versatility. We often think of him as an outside wide receiver, but he can line up anywhere. And that really helps make us harder to game plan for. 
put him in the slot and get that occasional matchup versus a linebacker and that's easy yardage every time. Making the offense easier on Watson and the team as a whole means getting more of these mismatches and Fuller is the perfect guy to exploit them. Whether that's a linebacker or a slot cornerback who's usually not as good as an outside cornerback, that's really going to make Fuller's job easier and even Watson's job easier as well. In addition, his ability to line up anywhere is shared by Brandon Cooks and Kenny Stills. All three guys can play outside or inside, so that really helps to ease some of the injury concerns for me personally. Because say Cooks goes down, we can still have Fuller and Stills on the outside with Cobb in the slot or replace that with Fuller going down and Cooks on the outside, you know what I mean. Also say that Cobb goes down, we can, we can put Cooks and Stills on the outside with Fuller in the slot or really just any mix of those guys wherever. They've got the versatility to do it. Now, no player is perfect, and man, if Fuller can get his concentration drops down, there's really nothing you can complain about his on-field performance. He should honestly have way more deep ball completions, but it seems to be that's the area when he has some struggles completing the catch. He likes the basket catch, which is just not a great way to do it at all. And honestly, a lot of these drops can be pretty demoralizing, and I think that it's kind of a, just a mental thing with him, in my opinion, and he's just gotta get past that. And if he does, whew. I mean, remember in this Chiefs game, he dropped in three touchdowns. Like, this game shouldn't have even been close. And then, of course, the last thing with Fuller is his health. He's always been pretty skinny and dealt with some soft tissue injuries, missing 22 games over his four-year career. But he's changed his body over the offseason and looks like an entirely different dude. He's actually the biggest wide receiver out there, which, uh, you know, let's say it's a good thing. <laughs> I'm praying this is the year he can stay healthy because if he plays all 16, we're talking top 10 wide receiver production easily. All right, that'll do it for my Will Fuller film breakdown. I hope you all see him as the legit game changer that I do. He's a mismatch weapon. His deep threat ability opens up so much. Great route runner. He can just do it all. Just please stay freaking healthy. <laughs> So if you enjoyed, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. Also, hit that join button to become part of the Texans Thoughts team and get some big time perks. Huge shout out to our first member, Chris Solano. Be smart. Be like Chris. Join the team. Now the question of the day is, do you think Fuller can replicate Nuke's production? Let me know. Also, if you haven't, check out the Texans Unfiltered website, podcast, and YouTube channel. We've got tons more great content for y'all, and the links will be in the description. All right, hope you enjoyed and come back for more. Take care, everyone, and remember, the film don't lie.